Community Hotline is made possible with generous support by the Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission. The Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission advocates on behalf of the public interest on communications policy issues at the local, state, and federal levels. Hi, and welcome to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. Thanks for joining us tonight. Community Hotline has a, a mission of focusing on local nonprofits and other organizations that are doing really good work in the community. And tonight we're going to start off talking about PowFest and Pow Girls. And with us to represent those organizations is the Executive Director, Tara Johnson Mettinger. Nice to have you here, Tara. Thank you for yeah. having me on your show, Monica. It's a pleasure. So yeah. we have had here at Metro East kind of a, an association with PowFest and Pow Girls for the past couple of years and have been very impressed by the work that you've done. Could you uh, tell our viewers a, a little bit of history maybe of, of how PowFest itself got started because that was first right PowFest yes so um, I moved back to Portland in 2002 from Los Angeles I've been working in the media industry for a number of years and um, I met a gentleman Tony Fuentes and he had a version of PowFest that ran in 2003 and I worked with him on a shorts film festival for a while and PowFest went dormant and, and I said you know the Shorts Film Festival kind of hit its ceiling and I really wanted to uh, work and to reboot PowFest. So <laughs> I took it over and rebooted it 10 years ago. Wow. And I've had grown it to where it is today. So um, a lot of work in terms of making sure that we're ensuring getting women directed films on screen every year and some other programs that we've developed over the years. So it was a big strong commitment for myself as a woman working in the industry to make sure that there was a space created for women to show their work. Because this is an industry that's not well represented with women, is that right? I mean, it's, there's, it's very much male dominated. Well, I think it's how you look at it, certainly, but um, yes, the statistics are, have not changed very much over the years. There's um, studies that you can look at if you're interested in statistical information, but essentially it's been about 7% of women that are consistently in the director's chair okay. for uh, films that are in the top grossing 250 films. So okay. those are statistics you commonly hear. There are certainly a lot of women working in the industry, industry, whether they're in those top, more, you know, higher echelon positions is where the, the ceiling kind of starts um, squashing those mm -hmm. opportunities. And okay. so where I come into work is to ensure that um, that we have a strong support network for women, not only to show their work, but a, to build the community surrounding women that are wanting to work in this industry, breaking down barriers that they may have. Mm -hmm. And that uh, translated ultimately into the Pal Girls program and why we started that. Great. So the, um, the Pal Girls program does work with young girls mm -hmm. and you are working with them, helping them to, to develop into young filmmakers. Um, tell me a little bit about that program. I know it's sure. for girls 15 to 19, is that correct? 15 to 19, okay. so we're focusing primarily on the high school mm -hmm. age group because um, our workshops are, uh, I would say the stamina needed to, <laughs> to go through one of our workshops is uh, more, 
consistent with someone that's a little older. So Ooh. we may look to developing something for a younger age group, but right now we're just primarily focused on high school age. And uh, we provide week-long workshops. Uh, usually we start, a pal girl would start in our intro to filmmaking right. class, which we host here at right. Metro East. Oh, that's great and, fun um, when the girls are here. They... Yeah, and it's so cool. I love working with Metro East because those girls can come back in here and access the gear and equipment that they they learned about right. in our introduction and they do. workshop they with do. them, and they do, yeah. and and it's so cool to hear from them and see what they're doing after they leave our right. workshop, but also to be there as a conduit to help them. Uh, if they're wanting to pursue a career in media, we can come through as an organization. I work as a producer director here mm -hmm. in Portland, can connect them with uh, professionals that are working in the right, field and right. get them certain opportunities that they may not have through another, um, you know, summer camp that they're doing. Right, and right. So those are things that we're we're highly focused on the media literacy component mm -hmm. of what uh, these girls are are receiving just in their <laughs> daily lives, and also want to make sure that they have a space to create their own stories. So we don't dictate what they need to say in their movies that they make here at, at Pal Girls. We actually hear from them and distill down and encourage them and support them and just help be there as a guide to help them craft mm -hmm. this best story that they want to uh, show. So their, are, their voice is being heard. They're absolutely. They're able to, to share yeah. that. Yeah, and that's great. I know that um, we've had girls that have come in here and have gone through the program and then have come back and, and have you know done different things. They've either wanted to produce their own show or they want to, um, they want to do some volunteer work in the community and share what they've learned, which is really great. And not all girls are going to become filmmakers. Right. But what, what other things do you feel like they get out of this experience oh, with the camp? There is so much to be gained from being at this camp. We have many girls that come and take our different variety of classes. Mm -hmm. We Last year we did a silent movie workshop, mm. so it was a slightly different than our intro filmmaking. We also did a documentary, advanced right. documentary workshop where we worked with a client and we did ah. some image videos for another nonprofit that's focused on the similar age group called the Portland Kitchen. Right. And that was so cool because they got some really great professional skills mm -hmm. in that they had to pitch the client and talk about what the client wanted as um, ultimately you know, it was a, a fundraising video, so mm -hmm. there was, there they had some parameters around the media that they wanted created, but the girls also wanted to present some of their creative ideas. So it was They worked together on that. Yeah, yeah, they worked together, and so they learned that negotiation skill set that's highly important in any industry. Right, right, making and the client happy. Absolutely. Yet being and, able to express yourself. And is, also working right. collectively in a group mm -hmm. and deciding, you know, sort of who is gonna take on which role, mm -hmm. but also giving everyone the space to explore all of those roles, because there's so many on a film right, set. Right, right. And um, it's so that leadership skill comes component of finding one's voice and speaking up for yourself and advocating for yourself. I think that there's elements of that in Pal Girls and then they can take that forward right. through any industry. I would have loved this when I was high school. <laughs> really any yeah. high school girl, Absolutely. whether they were interested in filmmaking or not, would benefit from that, right. from that whole experience, I think. Right, and it's neat to see now that we've done this, we're entering our third year. Several of the girls have gone on and they're pursuing careers in the That's industry exciting. or applying to film school. And so we, we're there to support them in that journey. And we hope that, you know, they'll continue to share what's happening right. in their lives with us. Okay, well, that's, that is exciting. Yeah. Now, when the girls go through this and they do create something after this week uh, in their camp, then you show this at the Pow Fest. You show their work. Right. right. So um, every year at Pow Fest, which is always the first weekend in March, we have a youth section. We've commit been committed since day one of the festival to have a s showcase of youth created films. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have films from all over the world this year. Right. But within that, um, we always show our Pal Girls films. So each 
of those creators gets that opportunity to be a filmmaker right. at a film festival. Some of our films have gone on to be selected for other film festivals. So That's many impressive. of the girls have been able to go and be a part of, of other film festivals, wow. which is really exciting. Yeah. So being part of that festival environment, getting up on stage and talking th about yeah. your film, filtering questions, you know, there's That's a lot of things for this. that are, you know, and what a great new experience. to many of them. Yeah, yeah, what a great experience. I've, been, I've been to the Pow Fest and, and watched those girls yeah. in the Pow Girls segment, and it's, it's impressive. They, they do, they uh, have some real confidence in, yeah. in themselves. You brought some pictures, I believe, of the of Pow Fest. Yes. And maybe we could take a look at those and you can tell, sure. us, what, tell us what we're looking at there. Okay. So it is a fun, a very fun event. Yeah. Oh, so this is a um, sort of the beginning of one of our short sequences. We always have uh, we have multiple short sequences. Quirky happens to be one that's pretty frequent through every film festival. So we do have a collection of quirky so it's shorts. So quirky shorts. <laughs> yeah. So um, animation experimental, also a huge crowd pleaser. This is an example of one of the Q and A's that um, we had many filmmakers there that came right. to Portland um, and represented their film. There's the Marquee at the Hollywood Theater. And it's a great, little, yeah, it's a great so venue beautiful. for showing I think it was these. almost going to storm that night, oh, yeah. so it just was like gorgeous. <laughs> and of course, they've restored this theater amazingly, and it, we've been there all 10 years, and wow. it's just been so awesome. This is um, Lisa Gay Hamilton and mm. um, Britta Shogren, who are, uh, uh, Ms. Shogren was a director of a film called Redemption Trail uh, that Lisa Gay uh, starred in. And so this was a Q&A that I was uh, doing after their film. Uh, we also have, you know, not all films are strictly directed by women. There mm -hmm. must be, the only rule of Pal Fest is it has to be directed or co-directed by a woman. Oh, okay. So some of our films have co-directors mm -hmm. and we love for everyone to come up and talk about their work. Mm -hmm. And um, this particular instance was a, a film that had a Ashlandonian, is that what you call it? Someone from Ashland <laughs> that was in it. <laughs> no and they idea. came up and um, and the, the older woman there was in the film and so she came came and spoke about her nice. experience being the subject. Uh, this is a panel discussion that we had a couple years back, and we're actually doing an education day oh, at PowFest this year, which I'm super excited about. There's three panels. It's gonna be hosted at Northwest Documentary, which oh, is yeah. in Portland. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're gonna be doing uh, panels on the topics of cre creating and maintaining space safe spaces for women's voices. Oh. Uh, I like that. Political film, uh, documentary filmmaking in a new political climate. Uh huh. And it is. And uh, beyond mentoring, sort of looking beyond mm. even programs like Pal Girls, mm -hmm. how they fit in the greater sort of um, environment of media education uh, and the experience of women working as professionals in the industry, whether mm. they're helping or are we adding an extra barrier here? I'm just kind of mm, contemplating. Mm. That should be an know, interesting conversation. An interesting conversation. Yeah. So we have many professionals who are working in the industry, educators that are coming together for this conversation. There's a bunch of pal girls in front of the marquee um, uh, before their screening. So that was a really fun day. They're all wearing their pal girls t-shirts. And I notice you have a pal girls t-shirt yeah. on today too, yes. There's a bunch of our volunteers from last year and um, my team members. So lots of people nice. who come together and help support the festival. We couldn't do our work without them. I have a pretty small team and then we have volunteers you know, that help community out. Community member, Absolutely. community partners and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there's opportunity if someone who's watching the show wants to volunteer, there's information on our website uh, on how to do that. And, and that would be yeah. a fun experience just yeah. as a volunteer, just to get involved that way. I oh, think. absolutely. You get yeah. to meet people that yeah. have traveled to Portland, see some great film, meet some new people. Right. So. You brought a film, speaking of films, uh, yeah. that one of the Pal Girls groups created. Can you uh, set that up for us and let us take sure. a look at that? So this was, um, it's about a year old. We made it in our winter session of 2016. And uh, the, the film is called Sticks and Stones. Mm -hmm. And the there was a lot of really grand ideas that came out of that particular session of Pal Girls. And we had a shorter time frame that we were working in, but they were highly ambitious in terms <laughs> of production value and what they wanted to do and 
what they wanted to say. So in um, a short period of time, in a very short yes. period of time, which is fine, you know, and we want to support that. But um, they did some really cool technical things in this film, and they also. Um, what teenagers are going through and experiencing these days and how vocal and um, understanding they are of what is happening in at, at that age group is so phenomenal. Like I, I mm. look I sit in some of these Power Girl sessions and I think I had no idea some of these topics you're even talking about when I was 16, 17 right. years old. I was just not aware. So it's a very different world. Mm -hmm. And their voices are so strong. And this film, I think, in particular, really um, encapsulates a lot of struggle um, and things that they're going through okay. as young women sort of coming of age. And it's a, a film about microaggressions. Okay. And um, I'll let well, the viewers let's watch take a it. Look. Let's take a look. Yeah. Thanks. too much makeup. Hi. Hey. Aren't you going on a date tonight? Yeah. Is that what you're wearing? I was planning on it. Okay, well, have a good time. Thanks. job interview I had this morning. Oh, nice. So. Yes. Hey, do you think if I asked her out, do you think she'd say yes? But she's a girl.
that's a powerful, very powerful film. Very, very powerful. And if people are interested in seeing more from the Powell Girls, mm -hmm. you can go to powgirls.com and all of the films are online. Great. Yeah. Great. So. Well, we're out of time. Um, other information about the workshops uh, that sure. girls can attend on the website? Absolutely, yes, out. the workshops, you can sign up on the website and there's more information about the summer workshops as well. Right. And then two highlights from the film festival that's coming up, um, Friday, uh, Thursday, March 2nd, we're showing This Is Everything, Gigi Gorgeous from Academy Award winning director, Barbara Koppel about a transgendered YouTube star. And then on Saturday, um, March 4th, we have our double feature with our guest of honor, Cheryl Dunyer. All of that information Wonderful. is on palfest.com. Right. And you can go there and learn all about the films. Thank you so much, Tara. Thanks Thank for you. joining us tonight. And if you'd like to get more information, go to that website, check it out. It's a great, fun, educational, and a really interesting festival. And if you're a, a teenager or the parent of a teenager and want to be involved in Pal Girls, do check it out. We'd love to have you join them. I'm Monica Weitzel. Stick around. We'll be right back with more of Community Hotline. Line is made possible with generous support by the Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission. The Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission advocates on behalf of the public interest on communications policy issues at the local, state, and federal levels.